Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. You have an image like this, and let's just say you wanted to replace the sky. Do you really want to replace the sky with something like that? Well, that's none of my business. But in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the limitations you'll find with the AI sky replacement filter that is in Luminar 4. I've been getting a lot of emails about Luminar 4 over the past uh, several weeks and a lot about the AI sky replacement uh, panel or filter, whatever you'd like to call it. A lot of people are trying to get it to do things I don't think it was meant to do, or at least it's not capable of doing. And I just want to kind of clear up what it can and can't do and what it's really effective at and not effective at. For example, um, I had a person uh, email me recently. They had an image very similar to this uh, as far as the light is concerned. Uh, the subject was totally different, but it was a very bright summer day. There were clouds in the sky. Uh, there was a lot of grass and trees and clouds in their image. And they're trying to use the AI sky replacement filter to put the Milky Way in there. So they're going here and they're going down to, let's say, the Galaxy 1 and uh, picking that. And one really cool thing about the AI sky replacement panel or filter is it kind of relates the scene. So this was, you know, um, a pure daylight scene. And when I added this filter, it did make it look more like night. Now, there is the, the grass is very bright, but um, people could argue that somebody was light painting um, at night to brighten up the grass. So it doesn't look that crazy, but it still doesn't look right, right? And uh, anyway, the per what the person was asking me, and I don't mean to be rude or ignorant uh, to this person. They're a very nice person. Uh, but, um, for example, in this image here, if you look way down here, and I'll zoom in right here, uh, if you see there's uh, clouds that were in the original image are kind of bleeding through. And that really is kind of a limitation of this sky replacement panel is that it doesn't totally remove the underlying sky. It puts uh, the image, the new sky image on top of it and will do uh, what it can to blend it in. And many times, especially along the bottom edge, it's going to uh, bring in whatever is on that back sky image. And there's very little you could do about it. Uh, you uh, what my suggestion to you, just first off, is if you do want to replace the sky, this filter will look work best when your sky, your original sky, doesn't have any clouds in it at all. That's when it will work best. Obviously, there's no clouds to bleed through. Uh, in the case of this, uh, what I would suggest you do if you really want to try to replace the sky, this is a beautiful sky as it is, but if you wanted to replace the sky for whatever reason, is you would try to process it to try to diminish those clouds as much as possible. So uh, use um, filters, you know, whatever, to bring down contrast so those clouds don't look as prominent in the blue sky. It's going to be very difficult to do. I don't think you're going to be able to accomplish it with an image like this. What else you could do is you could go and you could try some of these um, sliders, and but they have limitations as well. Uh, for example, the horizontal blending, if you start to move that around, you can see as I move it to the right, we're kind of just bringing more of the underlying image into the shot. And if I move it to the left, we're kind of pushing everything down, but we're still keeping those clouds. So it really didn't do anything uh, with these clouds that are there. Horizontal position as well, that's the actual uh, movement of our cloud, or our, sorry, our in this case, our uh, Milky Way or Galaxy. And you can see that it's, it's just still kind of transparent. Um, translucent maybe is a better uh, term where it's allowing those clouds to come through. Now, relighting the scene uh, is really when you add any sky to an image, it automatically relight the scene to try to get the color temperatures to match and actual the general light and direction and things like that to match. And if you come in with the relight the scene, it just kind of moves things around. So we're making the grass darker and... I move it to the right and that might look a little better for this image move it to left it's making the grass 
uh, lighter. Now, if I move it way to the left, we're getting more of the clouds coming in. If I move it to the right, we're getting less of those clouds, but we still have these clouds on the horizon uh, come in. So that obviously isn't doing anything either. Now, Sky Global, um, in most instances, uh, we, is just going to make the original sky a little more prominent in the image. Uh, as you can see, if I move it to the left, uh, the original sky is popping through a little more. So we could reset that. So a lot of these, uh, these uh, base sliders really aren't helping us. We could go to advanced settings and close gaps isn't made for this. It's made for when you actually have a gap and you could move it, uh, you know, kind of uh, blend it in a little better at that transition area. And you could see it's not really working. It's not doing anything uh, fruitful in this instance. If I move it to the extreme left, it seemed to have removed some of the clouds, but now we have these weird artifacts and the original sky bleeding through on the uh, sculpture here. And it's just not working. It's just not, it's a limitation. It's just something that can't be done. Now the local sky is the original sky. And you can see if I move that to the right, it's kind of, uh, I thought it did, well, I thought it diminished the clouds, but if I move it to the left, it diminishes the clouds slightly. It's kind of weird. It's, it's acting odd. If I click on it and move it around, it seems to do stuff. And then when I let go, kind of reverts back. So that isn't doing anything. Uh, defocusing the sky isn't going to help. That's just blurring out the Milky Way. Um, the sky temperature and sky exposure um, aren't going to help either. That's just going to change the color temperature of the sky and make the, um, the replacement sky brighter or darker. So that isn't going to help either. So this is really a limitation of this panel. Um, this is just pushing it to the extreme. You just really uh, can't expect it, in my opinion, to work like this. Yes, uh, in my opinion still, this is an amazing piece of software, but it's really not made for doing something so drastic. This will work best when your replacement sky closely matches in color temperature and light, and definitely directional light, of the original image and when the original image's sky doesn't have a lot of clouds in it then this works the best otherwise it's you just can't expect it to work um it just in my opinion now here you could see it relit the scene it made it very dark actually i probably should re reset this whole filter then go to that let's see what it does when it goes on there, it, it really still relit the, relit the scene, but you can see these clouds are still coming through uh, down here at the bottom. And uh, you could just, you know, again, come in and try to relight the scene, make the bottom part a little darker. It might look a little more natural. I don't know. I mean, this isn't something I, in my opinion, you should really think about doing. Hey, here, this matches the scene a little better, uh, the grass being brighter, and you have this bright area here but we still have the clouds bleeding through here. You could come in again and try to move the sliders around. Now using a mask isn't gonna help. You could get a brush and you could like try to brush it in, but when you do that, it doesn't blend in the color temperature anymore and the light, right? So, and then, you know, it's just not, see the clouds still coming through. It just doesn't work. It's just not something that, um, is possible so anyway i just kind of wanted to do this very short video and talk about some of the limitations here make you aware of it and maybe i don't i'm never one to preach but maybe you should just pump the brakes a little bit and put some of the limitations on what you're trying to do um you know if you're a, a, a just a photographer and you're trying to do this you want to print some nice prints to share on your wall share with family and friends fine then go ahead but if you're um trying to make a name for yourself this isn't the way you want to do it, uh, in my opinion, all right? So you don't want to uh, fake skies and, you know, say that, you know, you created this image, you were out here at, you know, uh, four in the morning, out in the middle of nowhere, uh, doing something like this, because it's just too easily proved false, and it's just not right. Also, if you're a documentary photographer, you shouldn't go anywhere near the AI sky replacement panel ever. 
Uh, you shouldn't do anything like that ever. If you're going to enter an image in a contest, unless it explicitly says that you're allowed to do this, you definitely shouldn't be entering these images in contests. And that's really, I'm just going to get off my soapbox for that. I never am one to preach. You guys have watched my videos now for seven years and know that I rarely ever, ever preach to anyone because I think photography, in my opinion, uh, not a popular opinion, but I think it's an art form. And I really think that um, people should be open to do it as they see fit. But I think in this case here, you don't want to do anything that deceives anyone. So um, that's it. Limitations of the AI sky replacement panel that's in Luminar 4. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.